yeah, confronts uh, <laughs> James Woods in the restaurant. Yeah. And uh, Sharon Stone, Ginger's character, they're there, and she's about to give him more money. He finds out where they are. He walks into the um, restaurant, and he sits down next to them. Yeah. And I thought that was such a classic scene because he's like, I heard of you. You're the card shark from so-and-so. Like, shouldn't you be off doing something like this? Like, I never knew that you were a heist man. I didn't know you to be a heist man. But yeah. if you're going to take her money like this, why don't you take mine too? Yeah, and he throws a stack of money and yeah. throws it at him. Like, I don't know how much money that was, but it looked like a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and James really doesn't say too much. He just like oh he checks the exits. Yeah, he looks around to see what's going on. He looks yeah to see if he has a, a point of run, running running yeah, out. And yeah. the exits are already covered by his bo- by the yeah. boys. And uh, yeah, I thought that that was such a, a key scene because it kind of shows you how he's <laughs> he's very like scared and on edge, but, and he's just, and he won't really look De Niro in the face. Yeah, he keeps looking around and looking around, trying to pretend like he doesn't know what's going on. Yeah, and he's like, "Look at me," or you know, yeah, "Look at my eyes. Look at <laughs> <in> my eyes." <laughs> oh, so good, man. Yeah, that was good. And I, I really like that scene at the um, when you know he leaves and uh, De Niro's boys follow him out, and you don't see what's happening. Mm-hmm. And then he tells Sharon, he's like, "Come with me. I want you to see something. I want you to see something." <laughs> She's like, "What? No." And he's like, come on. And he takes her outside, and they're beating the crap out of him, you know, yeah. in front of his car. And there's, <laughs> I noticed that during the scene, there's a little kid standing in front of the parking lot, like, looking around, like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> and there's people coming out of, like, their, um, out of their hotel rooms and stuff. And this guy's just getting, like, he's getting wailed on. And uh, she's freaking out. And she's like, what are you doing? He's my friend. Yeah. It's like, yeah. it's almost as if uh, it's like she's pretend she's acting like as if that's her boyfriend. Yeah, the guy that's getting uh, beat up or whatever. And then as they speed off, then James uh, James Woods starts talking the shit when he's already <laughs> when the, everyone's home. gone. And he's like, "Why don't you come do it yourself, you chicken shit motherfucker?" Yeah. Or whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, really good. Yeah, I like that one. Um, let me see. Uh, I have actually have a question for you. Do you think? All that stuff, um, like how they talk about, um, they talk about it a lot in the old Vegas movies when, uh, people get caught, like, counting cards and, like, uh, you know, whatever, you know, doing illegal stuff like, uh-huh. uh, counting uh-huh. cards, uh, fake dice and stuff like that. Um, how they're like, they beat the crap out of them or they, they would murder them and bury them in the, in, in the desert. Uh-huh. Do you think any, any, any of that type of stuff goes on still? Uh, um, I mean, like just getting the, like the shit knocked out of you, and then ha- them sending you on your way. I'm like, tell your friends, don't come here. If they, you know, I think, yeah, I think. Uh, I hope we don't get attacked for this. No, <laughs> no, but no, I think the mob is very much still in effect, and uh, I'm sure that you got some of the more traditional boys still around. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure that's something that gets passed down, much like uh, the like. Have you seen the town? Yeah, where they say how. Um, uh, how do you say, like bank robberies and stuff are are almost a tradition. It's passed down <laughs> from uh, from generation to generation. Uh-huh. I think that's how uh, that goes as well. Okay, it's just uh, it's probably kind of mutated into more of a contemporary thing, and yeah. maybe things have changed a little bit, but still, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I've been. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. Uh, new question. Um, have you ever been to Vegas, and do you have any interesting stories? Oh, no, I I wish I have, I have been to Vegas. I wish I could say that I have. So you've never been to I've Vegas? I've never been to Vegas. Ah. I'm 27, and I have never been to Vegas. Um, I hear crazy stuff from yeah. a lot of people that have been to Vegas. Uh-huh. I've never been to Vegas. Um. Wow. Yeah, I hear a lot of, uh. Like I said, crazy things that go on in Vegas and a lot of... Hint, hint, wink, wink, Alyssa. <laughs> <laughs> no. take, your, take your boy to, vi- <laughs> to Vegas. Get crazy. Uh, honeymoon, what's up? Uh, yeah. And we can, you guys are we can go engaged. elope. Yeah, come no. on. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I mean, I've, I've always wanted to go. Um, I just... Yeah, I, I wish I could say I've been. Just because I hear a lot of fun, uh, crazy fun stuff that goes on. Yeah. Um, have you ever been to Vegas? I have. Uh oh. I have. Um, I actually had a pretty bad uh, experience. Uh oh. I went. Uh, I went for uh, 
what's called Punk Rock Bowling, okay. which is a festival, a music festival, where you, you can go bowling and you watch a bunch of bands play. It come, it's over a weekend, I believe. Okay. And I went up there with... Uh, with I'm going to call her out. I don't care. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Annie's sister. Okay. Uh, our, our friend Annie's sister, uh, we went up there and um, she basically ditched me. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, it was weak, dude. Oh, they they refused to get a room, uh huh. So I didn't have a room. <laughs> oh shit! I I didn't have a room. Uh, and even that was okay, but they they uh, they just left me. So I was kind of I just kind of fended for myself. Like they left you how? Like what do you mean? Elaborate uh, on that. Like they left you just like like we went to the festival and everything yeah. was cool and we were hanging out and then uh, they wanted to go because uh, I went with her and then her friends. Okay. And they weren't really mutual friends, not people I knew really well. Uh -huh. So they all let one girl uh, went back to San Diego that same night because okay. she wasn't feeling it so she left and I was like oh shit man like what am I going to do and then yeah the the rest of the people and Annie's sister went to go uh, they wanted to go party yeah and um it was almost like as I was inconveniencing them being around oh man you know what I mean like yeah. they uh, it was like sh it was super shady man you had like that you were like that third wheel kind of feeling yeah so then yeah. Uh, I basically ended up being by myself Luckily, I, I uh, befriended a few people who had a room, nice. so then I was able to crash. So I found, yeah, I found... I oh, okay. Have, I was going to ask you, like, were you sleeping outside? The first night, I had to sleep in the car because oh. I was so tired. I couldn't, I didn't, yeah, I didn't know what to do, and I slept in, in the car. And it, well, at least you had a car. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, that sucks. <laughs> Oh man, I don't want everyone ever to go to Vegas now. Yeah, but but I, I will say this: the music and the festival definitely made up for it. Okay. I also had to miss. Uh, they they didn't, and then on top of that, mm -hmm. they didn't want to come back on the day that we uh, we um, we had agreed on. Okay. So I missed work. Oh no! I was able to call out, so it was okay. Yeah. But. I was so pissed that the the people were so inconsiderate that they were just like, they and they told me they're like, oh, what is what's the big deal? Like it's one day of work. What does that matter? <laughs> and they're people who don't really have to like, they don't got to work. Yeah, or not? <laughs> they're just not hurting for money. I'll say that. Okay, gotcha. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm just like, really, dude. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, sorry for uh, yeah for for laying uh throwing some shade. Yeah, we're laying a sad story on you guys, but uh, yeah, no, that that's a good, that's a that's a that's a pretty cool Vegas story. It was. And I wish I had a cool one. <laughs> Suck <laughs> my life. Um, do you want to jump into? I have a Scorsese interview um, queued up. Do you want to jump into that? Yeah, let's jump into it. It's a. Uh, it's a slightly lengthy uh, co conversation, not too long. I'm not yeah. gonna, you know, we're not gonna sit here too long. But uh, it's very fun, and he talks about why he uh, he was interested in doing this film, and uh, it kind of goes in through some of the characters and and relates it to stuff in his life, and it's okay. really cool. So nice. uh, let's take a listen. Yeah, guys. let's do it. It is another collaboration with Goodfellas screenwriter Nick Pileggi, and it stars Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, and, Sher and Sharon Stone. I'm very pleased to have him back at this desk for a consideration of Casino and whatever else he's been doing. Welcome back. It's great Thank to you. see you. Uh, I saw you almost two years ago. We just happened to see each other at a dinner, and, and or maybe it was almost two years ago, wasn't you know, it? Yes. And you yeah. said you've done nothing but work on nothing but, but, cas but Casino until about eight o'clock last night. And what's where is it right now? Because you're going to go. When is it? going to be released it opens uh it premieres tuesday okay. in new york um and you're working on it last night well a minor mi minor mixing details yeah and some of it was over the phone in fact but uh, my editor thelma schoonmaker and my cinematographer robert richardson is out in the west coast right now trying to conjure up uh, a dupe negative that would be suitable to make prints from um and they're maybe a little bit uh, hit and miss, but they're getting there. They, they'll be able to do it by the end of the week. Did Pileggi bring you this idea? Yes, he did. Yeah, he brought me the idea uh, two and a half years ago. And what he brought me really was a newspaper article about a husband and wife uh, domestic squabble on a lawn yeah. at about 7 in the morning uh, in, in Las Vegas. And from that article, um, the whole story right. unravels. 
Uh, all the elements come together in that sequence, and that's the way we try to structure the picture. That that article and that uh, scene on the lawn was so vivid for me, and and, and it, it became um, uh, it became so uh, meaningful because of the relationship between the husband and wife and the difficulty in their relationship and the domestic fighting and that sort of thing yeah. brought down not only themselves but an entire empire. You must see this as larger than just another gangster film. Uh, yes. How yeah. do you see it? Well, I, I always imagine, I said, well, you know, I was, I, was, I was interested in doing it. I said, but the only way to really make this one, I said, yeah, obviously I want Bob in it, Bob De Niro, and it's a perfect part for Joe Pesci, you know, and it'd be wonderful. And be Harvey like, would have been in it except he was Har off somewhere. Harvey was somewhere else yeah. as usual, yeah. making yeah, another right. picture. He makes right. 15 a year, thank God. And uh, he, um, uh, I said, I really, really need to, uh, I needed to expand the story. I said, if it's going to be about Las Vegas, and it really deals with the end of Vegas uh, of a certain period in time, by 1983-86. Um, in my mind, it became something like an urban western, where it was really the end of the old Wild West, the real end of the Wild West, in a way, where things were wide open. Um, and I figured that it had to be a picture where you could have these characters go through a real um, uh, breadth of a story, uh, the, the, the depth of a story. And I figured at least a three-hour film. A three hour film. There's no sense in, in doing another gangster picture in the sense that I felt Goodfellas was very, very, um, it was really very precise about the way of life. Granted, this story deals with a higher yeah. level. Yeah, uh, Pelleggi told me that yeah, this was a much higher, higher level. Much higher level. And also set in an American city. And uh, what threw me was when we started working on the script, it was January 2nd, 1994, in a hotel, Nick and I, and I looked at Time Magazine, and the cover had the MGM line on the cover, and it said, Vegas, the American city. Yeah. And I said, well, that's the, uh, that's the, that's truth, and... Uh, we got a story. Yeah, we, we have a story here. This is the American city. I mean, they're talking about the new Vegas, but, yeah. you know, the sense of uh, Vegas and what it represented represents uh, chance, luck, you know, everything wide open, place for... At that time, the old Vegas, in a way, a place for gangsters, hustlers, gamblers, and that sort of thing. Um, and it had a kind of romance to it, uh, which now has changed radically, you know. But that aspect of calling it the, the American city of today, yeah. for the future, that could be a dangerous now, thing. Do you have to sell De Niro on doing a film with you, or do you just call up and say, are you busy? And he says no, and you say, let's go. Oh, no, not necessarily. Uh, it always has to do with, always has to do with character. If it's a character that you think is right and he agrees, then it's a deal. Or if I think if I think it's right and he gets interested in it and we start working on it, because that's what we were doing on the script. Um, we worked on a few things over the past few years where we would get halfway through the script or halfway through the script writing process, and we'd find that we just weren't able to pull more out of it for him as a character, and we dropped it. And he would decide not to do it because it's yeah. just not well, something myself that too. And you, I don't want, you, yeah, myself, too. Yeah, both of us. Both of us uh, realized that maybe it's just not... Because it doesn't really pay for us to uh, do pictures again unless we could find other things to do. Like Max Cady, for example, was a yeah. over-the-top theatrical... Uh, wild performance of his and I found things that I wanted to say in Cape Fear that didn't interrupt what he wanted to say which is the way we always worked Raging Bull also and like what will we do that, that's new and so we found uh, in this particular character the Ace Rothstein character we found that uh, we could chart some new territory what is it about him that makes him so good I wasn't years ago I was not able to articulate it but there's something about him that he could take. It's one of the reasons I had the stroke of luck of making a few good pictures with him that uh, a lot of people kind of like. It's Taxi Driver and Raging Bull, um, even to, uh, to a certain extent Goodfellas, where he plays people, play, takes characters that ordinarily are your villains mm -hmm. in a film. And in my pictures, I like to make them the heroes in a way, or you quote hero, unquote, you know. And... Um, there's something about him that's very compassionate as a person. He's one of the most compassionate people I know, a really good man. Um, and he just has that ability to trans to um, relate that to the audience. The audience feels for him. They feel for this character. And therefore, there's no uh, character that he plays that is irredeemable. Yeah. So, so he has some anything. way to give that audience a way to hook into whoever he plays. Yeah. It's his face, Something it's his mood. It's not, only, it's not only his face, it's his, it's his, it's his natural, natural... Uh, his natural instinct in a scene. Sometimes we're improvising. He'll he'll invariably 
invariably do something that is a, that is that is quite extraordinary. Once you start shooting, do you direct him? I mean, do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, or is it most of it's you two talking it out before? Talking and out, once anyway. he gets it on the well, set, once he, once he gets there, there's no sense of saying, no. you know. Basically, we do a lot of, a lot of, of no, no, we, we do a lot of it in, um, uh, well, on Taxi Driver, the script was so solid there was no need.